Hello everyone. Welcome back to BPO Interview Tutorials. I hope you guys are doing really well. And today we came up with an interesting concept, guys. It's it's even a new for me as well. But I got this information from my management, and I thought to share the same information with you guys. So today's topic is quite interesting. Uh, that is related to seed utilization. Now, what is this? I believe most of you people here about this particular thing first time if not then it's fair enough let's start today's topic and before that i would like everyone to please share subscribe the channel check out our playlist you will find multiple videos it's more than 100 related to six sigma certification trainers quality analyst operation team lead operation kpi excel tricks google data studio people management tricks, trainer, many more are there guys, you can crack your interview very easily. So please don't miss to check the playlist and click on thanks button as well. If you feel like I really help you a lot, please do that and sharing and subscribing, please don't miss that. Let's start today's topic that is seat utilization. Now what is this seat utilization? Basically, for an example. I'm working with a company wherein we are 100 employees and we have 100 seats available. Now employees which doesn't mean that only the employees who are working at a ground level. Employees may be anyone for an example team leader, trainer, quality like the support staff, SMEs who are available everyone will come under the employees. Fair? Now I have 100 employees now I have 100 seats available. Which means how many seats will get utilized if everyone are working in one shift. Fair enough, 100 seats will get utilized. Now, to calculate all this, to arrange all the seats wherein all the employees will get the required place to sit. How do we can done that very perfectly? We will do with the help of seat utilization or sharing ratio. There is no ideal formula for it, but basically this can be done in multiple ways. For an example, we have 100 employees uh, and we have only 50 seats. As per the client requirement, we can move to the two shift uh, to the employees. Like few will work in morning, few can work in um, mid or night. It totally depends on the requirement of the client. We may also see in few companies wherein employee used to do part-time job wherein they will only come when there is a volume of productivity they will crunch that and they will leave the office so many ways are there wherein you can utilize the seat in perfect ways so that your productivity quality customer satisfaction employee satisfaction will not get impacted and that is much more needed guys so basically we will learn how we can do that and how perfectly we can utilize our seats guys it's very interesting topic please do listen very carefully because if we are planning in such a way i'm telling you you can increase your productivity employee satisfaction at all the perfect way let's move to the one shift model let's consider uh, we, are, we have 100 employees which include all the agents support staff everyone and we have 100 seats available Fair enough guys, we can utilize our seats like one is to one, everyone will get up our exact seat there. Now what drawbacks we may get if we are in a one shift? First thing, if we are working with 24 into 7 model, okay, but the client requirement or else maybe we are working with only one shift, then for the first 9 hours when we utilize the seats, okay, fair enough, the utilization done perfectly. What about the rest 13 hours or for that particular day? Our seats will be unutilized, which means there is a loss, loss in the sense we may keep another LOBs or another workflow as well at that particular 13 hours. We can also ask client to have a more ramp up, like any any way we can use utilize the 13 hours rather than keeping that unutilized. So this is one drawback here that we need to find and we need to start implementing on it like yes the seats should not be unutilized reason for one seat if one employee is sitting fair for sure he will be giving you productivity there so that may be done in a multiple way we can ask other workflows to work there we can utilize new workflow new lobs it's up to the management how they want to pick this up 
second drawback if we have 80 seats available and we have 100 employees and we all are working in a one shift model it, it will be really tough guys uh, wherein the productivity will get impacted reason everyone will not get a seat fair now there is a task for you all guys to think if we are working in one shift model what else a drawback or situation may occur in seat utilization guys share your feedbacks and comments in a comment section guys please do that do research on it see guys you can create a project also on it if you find something valuable or else you're adding value add to your work now let's move to the multi shift model or else hybrid model it's, it's fair guys suppose we have a 80 seats and uh, we have 100 employees we can switch our employees in two shift or three shift so that all the seats will get utilized there now to do that two things you need to keep in our mind first suppose you are utilizing your team in two shift model make sure where in which particular shift the volume is high you will keep more employee where the volume is low you will keep the lesser employees there it's totally on you guys how you, you need to see the pattern of the volumes what you are getting out this is the one now doing this for sure you will get a benefit in terms of productivity quality employee satisfaction everyone feels really happy now there will be one question in your mind if we are moving in one shift at a one time only the power or electricity will be used if we are moving in two shift for the entire 24 hours the electricity will be used completely agree to your point but that is a value enabler to get a productivity more perfectly so these are the value enablers like uh, uh, the, the power, the water supply, people may use washrooms, correct, in a two-shift model. High electricity will also get used because of two-shifts model or three-shifts model. These all are the value enabler, guys. This will give more value add to your productivity because employee will be satisfied, customer will be satisfied. Now, I just want to add one more point here. If I'm telling you that all the employees, that doesn't mean that only the employees who are working at a ground level this may include your billable, the people who are working with the position of team lead, trainer quality, they know what is billable and what is buffer. If you don't know, please share your questions here. I will definitely help you out in a feedback uh, section, guys. Billable employees, buffer employees, support staff, trainer, QA, SME, everyone, everyone will come under the, all the employees, guys. When we speak about the seat utilization, guys, considering the seat utilization. Now, let's move to the another part what is the best practice you can do to utilize your seats perfectly the first thing we can go with the multi-shift models that is the best practice second we can also take surveys from the employees like what is their needs towards their seats you need to take the surveys you need to take the feedbacks are they are feeling comfortable or not now you have seen in few companies maybe i have seen that people love to have a co-working desk Style, wherein there will be a round table and people will be sitting around to it employees will be sitting around people may love that kind of culture we may also have seen wherein people may love to sit separately or privately wherein they will be having an individual desk for them so it totally depends on the culture what employees are looking for now work from home is also an option but yes that is not that feasible because for sure productivity will get impacted wherein we cannot monitor the employees at real time and we have also seen in different companies wherein uh, the teams like well uh, training team are conducting sessions on it so that they can identify if there is any need from the customer or if there is any need from the employee towards the seat either he is feeling comfortable he or she is feeling comfortable or not now also we need to go with all the scenarios get ready on it now this is this is the best practice you guys can do guys the topic is small but the understanding is very really wide guys and we need to understand this particular thing uh if the seat utilization is not perfect for sure it will look like you are standing in a crowded area which doesn't create a corporate culture now let's move to the Calculating the employee to seat ratio. Now, guys, see, there is no exact formula for it, but yes, you can you can consider like uh, uh, 100 seats available and uh, 100 employees are there. Yes, one is to one ratio. It's a basic calculation we can do, but 
at a ground level you guys also need to think in a different way let's follow few steps for it the first steps calculate your minimum office occupancy and maximum of uh, office occupancy now what is this first always understand go to do a round of walk towards your office and check out the cabins like how many spaces is utilized how many spaces is vacant either the different workflows suppose you are working with a calling process there are chat process and there is also an email process all the three process are occupying the exact space is there is any wastage of space or not you need to check it out guys now second calculate the workspace need for each department after doing the first step you will get to know that for where is the space which is nowhere occupied or else wherein the space is available now you need to check out all the three workflows how many employees are there you need to do the sum of it you need to check how many seats you require on the basis of that you can arrange your space now what the next third step evaluate the distribution of the space for individual workplace uh, like conference room or collaborative work so totally depend guys how you need to utilize your workspace for an example see it's not something always you will go with the employee level the, you should also require some meeting rooms you will also require a space for washrooms like like everything you need to take care of it whenever we are thinking about the seat utilization fourth space implement fourth step sorry implement workflow software for booking a uh, room or desktop for an example i have seen in few companies wherein if you want to utilize any meeting room you need to fill a form or else you need to raise a ticket for it so that the entire meeting room at that particular time you will use that meeting room so that the other may cannot come or else the other may cannot utilize at the same time so this is also a culture that need to be followed reason everyone will get a equal space to utilize at their correct particular time fifth step continuous monitoring is required that is much needed it is not like only tl trainer quality like it, it is it need to be monitored by all the higher level as well so seat utilization is a very very big thing that need to be considered whenever we speak about the productivity quality customer and employee satisfaction that is all about seat utilization if you really like this particular topic please share your feedbacks comments likes much needed guys and share it with your colleagues you can also share this information with your managers so that it will shows like yes you know the things which is out of box wherein other don't know about it please do share this information with everyone that everyone should learn the new things and check out our playlist to get more videos don't miss to subscribe thanks a lot guys have a great day